Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. I'm here today with Russ Coker from the Cascade Wood Turners, and he's going to do the project this week. And what he's going to do is, what is this? It's a fence post made into a vase. Oh, okay, great. So that's what you're going to use? Yeah, this is a very uh, uh, dry piece of wood that we get out of Cheyenne, Wyoming, off my wife's homestead. Looks it, pretty gnarly. It, it is. Uh, what we have to do is evaluate this wood and, and uh, try to keep it all in one piece as we turn it. It's healthier that way. What we'll do is, is work, the, work the wood into a neck and then hollow it. Uh, drilling out the center and then after that we'll clean it up a little bit and cut off the tendon. Are you going to leave that nasty nail there? Eventually it will come out. Oh okay. Well Russ, let's make one of your fence post bases. Let's do. After mounting the fence post on the lathe between centers, Russ carefully examines the wood. After a hundred years or more weathering on the Wyoming Plains, the wood is full of cracks and loose wood. He's also looking for features that he'll want to highlight in the finished turning. Any loose wood receives first some thin CA glue, then some medium CA glue until it is firmly anchored. He does not have a detailed drawing. He's going to let the final shape emerge from the old gnarly fence post. A rubber glove helps keep CA glue off his left hand. When ready, Russ is carefully positioning the tool rest. The wood is far, far from round. It's hard to guess just where the swing is. He's forming the neck and the lip first. I expected him to start out with a really heavy bull gouge, but no, he's pulled out a large skew. Why a skew? A skew will cut better and leave a smoother surface. This is really scary as he approaches this wildly spinning hunk of cedar, but he's very careful. His skew is sharp and heavy. He's also careful to keep the cutting point below the middle of the skew's blade. There's not much of a beveled ride and he's cutting a lot of air. The ghost image at the top of the spinning wood is all he has to go by. The neck is almost a large nasty cove. How much to turn is a balance between preserving the weathered surface and obtaining a clean flowing shape. Some different sounds alert Russ to some loose wood, so he stops and anchors it down with more CA glue. With the neck partially formed, Russ needs to drill the hole at the top of the vase. But as usual, that is easier said than done. He has to first cut a tenon on the base of the vase so it can hold the wood in a four jaw chuck. But the wood is so far from round that this is scary. First he's using a skew to slice into the outermost edge. Then he uses a saw and chisel to remove the outermost waste wood, then back to a skew. A bed end also helps. Now with the cedar securely mounted into his chuck, Russ sets up to drill the hole. After just barely touching the end with the drill bit, a large chunk broke off. Time for more CA glue. This time Russ adds extra insurance with a band clamp. Then, to protect himself, he wraps the band clamp with tape to secure the loose end. Now he can finish drilling the hole. After drilling out what he can, he adds an extension to drill a little bit more, and finishes when he can start seeing the hole through a crack in the wood. Russ had just started forming the lip at the top of the vase when that large chunk broke off again. Time for more CA glue. Then finish just a little hollowing to flare out the hole. Then bring up the tailstock again to stabilize the cedar. You cannot believe the sigh of relief when the tailstock is back in place. Now Russ can finish forming the throat and lip. 
Since Russ can see the hole through the cracks in the cedar, he cannot go any thinner. But to my amazement, Russ pulls out a gouge for a little wood removal, but still finishes up with a skew. With the throat wood removed, Russ can bring his tool rest closer to the bottom of the throat for some fine finishing. It's still pretty wild turning since the wood here is still far from round. After some sanding up through 240 grit, that's enough for a rustic piece, Russ applies boiled linseed oil thinned with paint thinner. He thins it so that it will soak better. This goes on the rough natural surface. For the neck, Russ uses French polish for more sheen. There's still the tenon on the bottom to deal with. Russ cuts this off on the bandsaw. He doesn't care that it's not perfectly perpendicular. In fact, a little angle away from perpendicular is a plus. Then Russ smooths off the base on a sanding disc he mounts to his lathe. Well, Russ, looks like you finished it. I did, and uh, you know, it's always a pleasure to have a, uh, a piece of work that you have recycled from 100 year old fence posts and uh, it, it can sit nicely in somebody's home. Thank you Russ and we'll see you again on another video. Thank you Valen. This video where a fellow local wood turner turns a project was an experiment. Please comment if you like this experiment and whether you would like to see more videos of other wood turners on my channel. Meanwhile, please subscribe to both my website and YouTube channel. Always wear your face shield. You can't grab it just in time. It just does not work. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.